Good day. Uh, my name is Kenny. I'm an occupational therapist at Cambridge Medical and Rehabilitation Center. Today, I'm going to talk to you about spinal cord injuries, which is basically an injury to the bundle of nerves that are protected by what we call the backbone. Um, this basically, spinal cord injury refers to any damage to any part of the spinal cord or nerves at the end of the spinal canal. It often causes permanent changes in strength, sensation and body functions below the site of the injury. Your ability to control uh, your limbs, which is arms and legs after sustaining spinal cord injury depends on whether the injury occurred along the spinal cord and the severity the injury to the spinal cord. Uh, the complete spinal cord injury, it basically means an absence to of movement and sensation below the, the level of injury. And you also get incomplete spinal cord injury where there is some motor function and sensory function below the level of uh, injury on the cord. Uh, with the spinal cord, you get what we call quadriplegia, which basically means arm, hands, trunk, legs and pelvis organs are all affected. You also get paraplegia, which means paralysis affect all or part of the trunk, legs and pelvis organs. Some of the symptoms of spinal cord injuries include loss of movement, loss or altered sensation, loss of bowel and bladder control, changes in sexual function, difficulty breathing, coughing, or clearing secretions from the lungs. And now we'll move on to the causes of spinal cord injuries. You get two types, the first one being the traumatic spinal cord injuries, which result from sudden traumatic blow to the spine that fractures, dislocated, crushes or compresses one or more of the vertebrae. Can also result from gunshots or knife wounds that penetrate and cut your spinal cord. Uh, the last one is uh, the non-traumatic spinal cord injuries, which uh, may be caused by arthritis, cancer, inflammation, infections, or disgeneration of the spine. 